Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Derek and this is The Funny Farm. Today, we're gonna be working on getting our 656 International Harvester farm old tractor ready to go and back in a field. This tractor's been sitting a long time. I have a video already, I'll post that below. You can go ahead and watch that. Some updates we did to it, uh, but it still has not run correctly. So we are trying very hard to get it going and give it a little bit of a refresh. This is a budget build for this tractor. We don't want to spend too much money, uh, but we do want it to be reliable for the first time in probably about a decade. I would consider this a going to town tractor, something you can be proud of, take the wife to Applebee's or something like that. A little bit, that way I can attach some flexible tubing to this and run a temporary fuel system while I move this tractor. So I'm just trying to wiggle this nozzle back. That way I can slip this tubing on and then run it up to the seat where I'm gonna be at, just so I can pull it up and then back it into our garage. That way I can uh, put this thing back together with a good fuel tank. Get it. I'm gonna rig up a system, uh, just an old bottle, and I put a hole in the cap pointing out. So hoping that I can fill up this tube. I have the tubing all zip tied to parts of the tractor to keep it up. That way I can fill it up. See, I'm assuming the carburetor is probably going to leak, but the carburetor might be full of rust and debris just from the old tank. So it might actually be cleaned out too. I'm hoping I can get away with it, but I might not. So um, I'm going to put this in, see if it leaks, if it holds, if it doesn't. I don't know. And then we're going to see this old dog and bark off. And if it does, I'll make sure I get another refill for that. That way I can keep it running. And we're just going to run it right in there. We're just going to put it right in here. See, check out all this open space. So it can park right in here. That way we can reassemble it in the shelter, in the garage, get it out of the driveway. Now I'm assuming this is going to leak, but it might not. Let's look. Hey, here she is. This is where the 656 have sat for about seven or eight months. Let's go ahead and see if we can get this, this thing started. My fuel system is just temporary 516ths run up to where I'm sitting. I got one vice grip on. I have the ground on pretty tight. The choke is lubricated. We got the line connected with the hose clamp. We got a hose clamp. What could go wrong? Everything is out of our way. The goal is to sputter somewhere. Oh, heck yeah, man. To sputter somewhere in the driveway. Oh, ambulance falling just in case. Sputter here, get her back, and then back it up, back it up, back it up into the garage. I think we can accomplish this. All right, we helped grandfather out. Now let's uh, see if this thing will, uh, will, will, will fire up. Oh, hey, that actually worked. What I'm gonna do is try to keep it running this time, um, get it straightened up, and then try to back it in the garage.
Alright, for the first time in probably decades. Decades. The 656 is in the garage. Here we have it. Alright, now let's get to cleaning, get this tank sent off, and put it in the same back. Scarlet asked to please like and subscribe for some more action out here. So I'm using some super cleaner and some rubbing alcohol along with stripping all the metal down and painting it. So right now, what I'm gonna do is give this a final wipe down. I'm gonna paint one side and then I'll paint the other side. There's a little bit of pitting, nothing that I'm worried about. But again, I wanna make sure all that rust is removed from here and that way we can prime it and coat it. Well, this is what I'm using. Uh, rust and Painters Touch two times ultra cover primer. Flat gray. So the fuel sending unit's stuck in here. What do you expect? So I'm drilling out each one of these and we're gonna get this thing popped out. Cooper Ryder and I have to get this done tonight because we're driving it off tomorrow morning. I can take you to daycare, buddy. So we don't got much time to waste. All right, this one's taped up and ready to go. Both sides. I ended up ordering new headlights, headlight housings, sadly. I mean, this one's way too chewed up. It just needs some filler. Just a little bit of Bondo. It probably would work, but we're just gonna order some new lights. And I want them to match, so I gotta get two. Sucks to do that, but it is what it is. This one isn't as bad. This is the first grinding down. Right now set up, I have all of this ready to spray, minus the lights. I'm gonna save the lights. I'm gonna save this light. I'm gonna get, obviously if that's a scrap pile, save, save the bezels. But we're gonna spray the back sides of everything first. So do the backs first, then the front. I still have this to sand down on both sides. I also still have this grill set up. I'm using Rust-Oleum Almond for the IH white. This is the 901 white from the mid 50s to the early Now the Formula 656 did use a bright white. They just used it after this model year. So they still use this almondish color. They do sell an IH white. Um, even Magic and Valspar make one is similar. But they were out of stock and I just didn't want to wait. So I just got a couple of cans of this almond. It matches now, pretty good. Is it gonna be 100% correct? No but 97% is okay for me, honestly. I've had really good luck with this clear gloss from Rust-Oleum. I've used it on a couple of different projects around the farm. So I'm gonna use that also for this. This is just two coats on the backside. I'm gonna do that. 
and then I'm going to spray our clear coat on there. I'm thinking for the front, I'm going to do some, some better sanding. I just want to see how this lays and what it looks like once it dries. Want to do the back first. Once it's good, I'll show you guys what it looks like. And then we'll flip them over and do a little bit better of a sanding job on the front. That way, because you're going to see it. Well, it's two mornings later, and this is all sanded down now. What I did was I started out with a pretty high grip. Um, and just, I tried to build this all up with a coat of primer and then just knocked it down. It's still not the best, but it's going to work for what I want at this point. And it looks a lot better than the back sides. So let's go ahead. Let's start this off. I think I should have enough paint to run through all of these and put a nice uh, clear coat on them. All right, we have some good. All right, so what's my haul? I have our new light assemblies. These should be direct replacements. Slap on here. Now this white is different. This is the updated IH white. I wanna say it's 936. We're using the 901 white, which is uh, very similar to an almond white. So I'm actually gonna have to sand these down and repaint these, which is what nice. I also have our new badge approximately right here like this. I'm also gonna remove this screen and give this a paint as well. It's actually still in really good shape. I'm honestly surprised knowing my family. Light bulbs, I think they just, maybe they're not in this, they're, they're in here somewhere, so I have new light bulbs too, so. Plus the fuel center for the tank. Um, so that's everything. Let's keep on working. This budget restoration has really taken a taken a dive on the wallet. Something nice that I did see with, with these Steiner lights, and I'll give the part number, I'll say it uh, a little bit after this, but the Steiner lights, oh, maybe it's, uh, the, they're the track track to light lights. I order bulbs for these, but they come with bulbs. So that saves me like $50, which is really helpful. So I'll send those lights back. These already have them, and they are really well done. Have this, this, you know, this brass and these sleeved, um, and then the, the, the wire going out. Um, that all was extremely helpful and is done properly. Those, uh, you know, just strip down and get those ready for some primer. But I'll do that on the next batch of paint when I do the grill as well. Right now I'm working on, I'm not sure what these are called, but this, this the side skirts that have farm all written on them. So I'm going to keep working on those and priming them right now. I sanded these lights down. I really hated doing this. I didn't even show it because they were done so well by Steiner. Shout out to them. Just the wrong color. Our paint coat is the years prior, the 901. These were in the 935 or 936 paint coat. So let me go ahead and get these painted up. I sanded them down uh, so that the paint would stick. Hopefully that works good. I try to take the least amount of steps possible with these lights since they're such good shape.
So this is gonna be the third coat on this. I think it's turned out great. Um, and then we're gonna clear this too. Metal grill, uh, do you really need to do that? Probably not, but I'm gonna do that anyways. Then everything's gonna be drying. I got a couple of runs on the, on the headlight housings. Nothing I've gotten to run yet, except for those, sadly. But, so I might resand those. I might just leave them. I don't know. We'll see. See when it dries. And that's going to be it for painting, really. The rest is going to be reassembly. We will paint the bolt heads. Um, but, yeah. I think it's turning out great so far. All right, it's been 48 hours, so we are all dry. I'm going to put the new badge on this grill. Try to get this grill put back into um, the housing. Many, this is really rare in buying any parts online, but these holes directly match up. I mean, it's perfect. That is so awesome to see. We have a hole here to line up and a hole over there to line up. And that's it that holds this grill in place. I'm also gonna pretend like I did not see any of this. Yeah. Now I had to somewhat press this in here. I can't really tell if these are lined up, but I think they are. We'll, fi we'll find out if they don't get tight. All right, here's a new look of the grill. Totally different. You can actually be very proud of that. I'm trying to go through and find which correct bolts fit these. Now this on either this side or the other side, I forget, I was totally missing and I found it in the barn. And so none of the bolts were there originally. Um, so I'm just trying to find before I go to the hardware store and buy the correct bolts, <laughs> what actually matches up here for my assortment that I took off this tractor. Now let's get that other side on too. I believe I might've found one bolt that will work. Um, and I can go ahead and copy that bolt with a washer on it. Um, but I wanna make sure I run through a couple other bolts that I have laying down here. The lights should be ready to go. So I'll put those back together and see if I can get this hooked up. We're making a ton of progress on this thing. This is great. Um, hopefully this is the 4th of July weekend. Maybe we can have this thing mostly back together other than the fuel tank and the top 10. I'm going to go ahead and cut off the rest of this fuel tank line. And then um, I'm going to dummy in one of our panels, see if I can find any bolts that might match. I think I found one on the other side. Bolt's too long. But if I can find that, that right thread pitch, maybe I can find a matching bolt at the hardware store that's a little bit smaller. Or a little bit shorter, I should, I should say, shorter. I just got a call today too, this is Friday, that our tank is, is complete, ready to be picked up. Now that tank, will, it's gonna need to be, it's already primed, it's gonna need to be painted, which we have here. So I'm gonna pick it up on Monday after I take our son to daycare. Pick that up, bring it here, shoot it on Monday, and then we'll hit it with a clear coat. That tank's gonna be hidden with all the tin. And I, of course, I wanna take all this back off to paint the whole tractor next year, probably. Um, but just to have that done, we'll get that painted up. Now my next big dilemma is when I remove this tape of Farmall on both sides, the, uh, I don't know what color the Farmall should be. I think it's like a silver. It might be this original white, but it, it looks like it might've been repainted or just silver. I think, I do believe it's a silver chrome-ish lettering, and then it's a black backdrop. Now the black is coming off, it is off, it's different shades. So that black's going to need painted. So I'm probably gonna have to tape off the old, whole bit of white that I have redone and then shoot the black. I'll probably have to end up taping each one of the lettering as well. Or I can just hand 
hand paint that, brush paint it. See that black is really coming off here. What's this like a like a gold brass underneath that? I mean, it is a cool look though, but I'm trying to go for you know it actually being looking correct. But this is coming out as well. This one's slightly even worse actually. So I'm gonna have a decision to make on what to actually do here. Let me know in the comments, what would you do with these? I'll show you what I'm gonna do, but what would you do? And I did look to get replacements. I mean, they're like a hundred bucks each, so we're not doing that. Here's another look. Again, we got, we have that just black peeling and face. So I just got back, it's about midnight. I figured why not, let's try to get this painted. So I did go buy um, just some Rust-Oleum oil-based, um, this is black gloss. Um, and I'm gonna just brush paint this on to these. I sand them a little bit, hopefully it will stick. Um, and that should be the last, the last real ticket to go uh, before putting these back on the tractor. So let's get these, let's get you mounted up and let's start painting these things. So it's the next morning and I'm definitely gonna need a big, a smaller paintbrush for around some of these lettering, which I'll get. Found some mini paint brushes. Let's finish this up. Just walking out now. Just leaving Moyers Auto Service now who did our tank cleaning. Wow, they did an amazing job. So shout out to them over in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. Back home, here it is. So they split this tank, removed all the baffles, replaced those, primed, coated the inside, welded it back together, primed the exterior. And they also um, welded a bunch of pinholes that were on this side. So I fix this all up. So now we should be good to paint this bad boy. 
and get her back on the tractor. All right, this is my crafty setup that I thought of. I just got some paint. Let me go get that. Hey, it's coming out pretty good. All right, while things are drying, I have to get ready for reassembly. Now, I can't reassemble unless we get our lights. So, I have some wire left over from my last projects. What I'm going to do is run a wire uh, from this light to that light. And then I'm going to tee it off up into the housing. So, I'm going to work on that. I'm going to try to get both lights reassembled and... Maybe dummy rigged up here to make sure they work. All right, so I have this lens back in. I just wanted to show this again. Just making sure things match up here. Uh, you know, 20 days late, oops. But everything looks like it's good. I'm gonna move this down to the bottom once I have everything correct. Um, but just want to make sure I have this here loose. I'll tighten it down once I know everything's good. So I will uh, get the other side on as well. And then I will start running a wire. I still have about 100 feet of this primary wire. I don't know what gauge this is. 12 gauge? 14 gauge. So it should, be, it should work great for these. All right, so I have both lights W mounted. It's kind of hard to tell from back here you might be able to get a look at one side i think it's gonna look great personally but you know from a distance it is going to be hard to see both lights you know wow this you got to be pretty far back here to see both but nonetheless it's gonna look great and pretty factory all right with both lights mounted what i think i'm going to do is strip a wire place it in here crush it, and then shrink tube over it. I think that's the way this is supposed to work. I've never actually seen this connector before. If you have, let me know, but I'm just not familiar with this one. route so i'm gonna have one wire that tees off coming up here i'm gonna come here to my light switch gauge or housing now it's gonna be this top light right here now it also tees off once again um to maybe the i think it's to the block down below um so it's really this wire running here now i'm unable to get this out it looks like it's just crushed let me see if i can zoom in See that wire is crushed in there. It's probably been there um, probably since new. So I don't know if I'll be able to get that out. So what I think I can do is just splice into this red wire right here. And there's a chance this might work if I do that. Now the connections don't look that good. I might have to tape up some of that white wire. It has a little bit of a, of a cut in it. I'd like to replace that whole thing, but um, I'm gonna try to just do the easiest thing first, splice in and see if it works. In my now keep in mind on the channel that will all be replaced at some point I'm hoping next year we can paint this thing fully paint it maybe do wiring on it but I'll probably leave the wiring for possibly that next year or the following year um, and i do know that they make some sort of a harness for this but uh you know we'll continue to drive and learn about this tractor as we go but that's the plan. So I'm not half, I'm not halving it. You know, I'm, I'm doing what I can now, hoping to preserve it, get it going, but it will be fixed correctly when I get there. Just cutting up some of this old wire. So now I can, I believe I can pull this through. Yeah. 
So there's one, I already have the other one out. So old wire's out, new wire's in. Listen, it's fast professional soldering, guaranteed for a year. You gotta be nice and gentle with it. Ease into it. When soldering, use flux. Also, rose and core, don't use silver core. Don't make fun of my soldering now. I'm just a novice. Don't make fun of me. I'll be checking the comments. All right, let's say a prayer that this works. I'm looking more at this wiring and I'm trying to figure out, I'm looking at some diagrams and some restorations via online and some reports and Red Power Nation. You know, I think it's just gonna be have to, one of those things where I'm gonna have to uh, table it for a, a future date. You know, I see amp right here. Of course, that bulb doesn't work. But when I hit the key switch, you know, I don't have any. I don't have any lights when I come down here. I'm only getting about two, like two volts or so. So something could be amiss with the switch. I'm try still trying to trace wires. I'm trying to trace wires back from our key in the this amp reading over to our switch for the lights. I haven't been able to find that wire yet. I know some go to a block down there, possibly the resistor or something like that. But as you can see, it's it's a pretty it's a pretty jumbled mess. I don't really think anything works on here except for the key roughly and our push start. I'm not even sure if any of these work. The fuel right now won't because it's sitting on top of the hood. I have a new one. But I don't know if any of these actually work or function. All right, I have the tank in. My grandfather stopped by to help out. I'm putting four 916 bolts in each of the corners. Dropped in super easily. I'm trying to figure out um, the fuel sen the, the sensor and what to do. I think that's the fuel sending unit. Okay, all four bolts for the fuel tank are in, sending units in. I can move on to the next step, hooking up our fuel line and our, and our fuel bowl assembly. Here's our fuel bowl assembly. I'm gonna put that in and try to match it up with our lines, just so we can get some fuel into this thing before we continue on. <clears throat> all right, I think that's lined up. Okay. I think that's tight okay bare bones i think we're ready to go ahead and start this tractor put put a little bit of fuel in it and start it put a gallon or two make sure there's no leaks then try to start it see if we can get it idling this will be the first start with its tank and since around 20 2016 which it started one time and it ran into the backhoe and then they parked it and never touched it again so it's the first time that's gonna be running off this tank in a while. We're tackling some fuel leaks right here. I'm gonna pull this off, put some tape on it. Maybe that helps. And then this bowl, every time, um, it, it'll flow fine without the bowl. Once you put the bowl on, it's it cuts out. It doesn't wanna you know, release any fuel. So I don't know if that's because I'm gonna put a gallon in there or what, but I wanna tape this up first, put some more fuel in and see if I can get this I, you know, to, to dispense and fill up the carburetor. So we're gonna go from there. Okay, I think we might be ready for our first test fire, see if this thing works. Um, I think I have the fuel leak sort of okay. I can't tell how much fuel is getting the carburetor. So if it turns off, it means we're not getting enough fuel. So um, before I do anything drastic with that bowl assembly, let's see if this will even fire up.
I'm gonna place the front bracket on and try to get the uh, back bracket on. I guess maybe this is the front bracket and this is the back bracket, but um, have our bolts here. They have nuts at the end, um, at, the, at the back of these. They twist I've right in. I've spent most of my time today tracking down uh, this fuel issue. So I think I have it set up decently well. I don't know if it's pushing enough fuel still or it just needs to run. It really hasn't ran properly in a very long time, close to 10 years. You know, it's I've had it started and moved, but with really a lot of junk in the fuel system. So that carburetor might need cleaned out still, uh, but it should be getting enough fuel. Maybe the fuel lines also are, are clogged up slightly. I did crack, uh, you know, the line going into the carb seems to be flowing decently well, enough for it to run. So what I'm doing is I put this bracket on, I put this bracket on, um, and. I, these weren't here, they were just hanging, so I don't, I don't have a reference point, but these should go now over top of that. And then the tank top will sit on top of this once again. So uh, that's what I'm trying to just work on. I folded both of those up to make sure these sit here as well. And I might even pull out the top, the top, the top tin just for a reference point. So let me keep bolting these down. We're finding the right bolts. So here's where we are. I think this is all gonna get pulled in a little bit tighter once we put the top tin on. So this side's now complete. Let's do the other side now that I know what I'm looking at and I know how to, how to work this template. Having a lot of issues on this one. Need to probably chase that. first time with it running and it dies so it died after about a minute or two so I still feel like it's not getting enough fuel it's probably the carburetor it was so gummed up during the bad fuel tank so who knows what, what that looks like it probably looks pretty bad all right wrestling with the first part of the hood is gonna be first this one's gonna be second you can take the, remove the radiator cap. Should be good now.
Okay. That sat really well, actually. This one goes first. Okay. All right. As I let it run, it's getting a little bit better each time, but it still wants to die, so I'm gonna have to go through the carburetors to, just to make sure. Currently cleaning up uh, the rest of the bolts that I have for the top part of this tin. I don't have all of them. The two front wings are both sheared off. I forgot about that, um, but I don't want to weld it together because it's. I'm gonna be taking it back apart in a year or two, so I'm gonna have to have an idea on that. But let me just get these ones up. We'll fire okay, the place is a little bit more tidy. Fuel's on, so let's get this thing started once again. All right, let's try this again. Might be my cue to pack it in for the day. It's about 2 p.m. I've been out here since about 8 a.m. Tin's back on. What I'm gonna try to do next is Pull this thing out, give it a bath, and then um, give it a fluid film on the red. I'm also going to pull off this carburetor, give it a cleaning, and see if that helps helps the running issue. I think it will take care of the issue. That's what I, exactly what I didn't want to happen. Darn. 
Well, couldn't save the gasket. All right, here's what we have. Look how bad that is. All that rust from that poor old tank we had. So look, it just rusted up everything. Oh my goodness. So yeah, we're gonna have to take this apart, clean it all up. And I, I bet it, she runs a lot better after that. So let's get to it. I couldn't save the gasket either. I tried, couldn't do it. Ugh. I'm gonna be using the gunk parts cleaner for this. I haven't broken this thing out in a little bit of time. So I'm just gonna dump the whole thing in there. I've gotten it. <laughs> I don't even know if that's even cleaned out. It's just, it's terrible. I'm gonna let that rest in there for a while. We'll do two parts. We'll do this and then we'll do this one next. Let it sit for a day or two. Check on it every about, oh, well, like eight, 10 hours to check on it. All right, I got both pieces back and uh, out of that and cleaned up with the Dremel. Also with some gum outs, some miscellaneous other things. I put a new needle in. I don't think it needed one, but I, I did put that in there and it had a one, one of the gaskets was broken. And then I'll replace the main gasket that splits this. See if this thing works. It might look a little worse because I have some really bright light shining on this, but it's very clean now compared to what it was. Should be no obstructions um, anywhere. So let's put this back together. On. I just turned the fuel on. I'm gonna wait for this to see if it drips or not. All right, let's see if this thing will start up and if it's gonna idle or not. Um, and if it even starts up, hopefully it will. Hey, it's all about confidence. All right, let's see what we got here. We fix our issue. Okay, I verified fuels here, I verified fuels here. We should be good now.
Okay, it's not perfect, but what I'm gonna do now is fluid film and protect this outside layer. I washed it off, hand washed it. Now I just throw some protection on it. And I think it should really help bring out that shine and that red, um, at least until we can, you know, degrease this, in, this engine further and, you know, start to paint some of this tractor. Keep it runs. It's finally running good. This is a good feeling. It looks good. It's running well. Now it's usable. Looks nice. This is uh, really awesome to see, and I consider this a success. Thanks for watching this video. Um, if you want to 
contribute better, you can like, subscribe, leave a comment below on this tractor or anything else we've done on the farm. And don't miss further updates. We'll be doing uh, spark plugs, battery connections, lights, uh, fluids, basic tune-up on this tractor later on. Um, and we also have our video coming out on the Ford tractor soon, or part two, along with painting the barn. If we can get our paint in, that's been on back order. So thanks again for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you guys on the next one.